G'day, I'm John O from JNA and Down Under. Today we have an absolute nail biter for you. We're gonna bring those three boards together that we've been working on over the last few weeks. The first board being our twin, twin ARB compressor board. The second being our 12 volt BMS board, which manages all of our 12 volt systems coming from our Enerdrive 300 amp hour battery. And thirdly, but not finally, we're gonna be commissioning the 240 volt and the 2600 watt inverter into that 12 volt board as well. So anyway, stay with us. It's gonna be an absolute cracker, exciting to make sure it all works. So let's get on with it and see how we go. So here we go. We've now got our three boards here on the workshop floor, already wired up, ready to go. So it's gonna be the moment of truth. We're gonna go over, we're gonna hook the mains up to the battery, do some testing on the compressor board, the 12 volt board and the 240 board. Make sure they're all working. They're all talking to each other. Hopefully they are. Then once we've got peace of mind of that, in a couple of weeks when we get our truck back, we'll be able to we'll get our truck built, sorry. We're gonna put these boards into the truck, fingers crossed, and everything works like clockwork. Righto, let's get into it. All right, so here we are, the moment of truth. We've already pre-wired the board. We've got the active already hooked to the battery. We've pre-wired our ARB switch to drive the twin compressors. Everything's set, ready to go. Let's get this neutral on and give it some power and we'll start doing some commissioning. Right, oh, now that neutral's been hooked onto that onto the battery under our 300 amp lithium. We'll now look at turning on the circuit breakers. Once the circuit breakers have been hooked up, that'll then give this board power. Moment of truth yet again. There we go, the board now has power. It's all hooked up. We'll just do a bit of testing throughout the board and we'll make sure that all components are working correctly and then we'll move on to the compressor board. So we've got the trusty moulding meter here. We're just gonna go through and check all the components, make sure they've got power and everything's operating as it should. First of all, we've got the, uh, the mains in which is obviously working, we'll check that, we'll put it on the neutral, check our mains, power there, and power there, so that's all working as, as it should. Um, we'll go through and we'll check each component as well. Out of the fridge, our fuse box, nothing to the solar because I haven't got the solar panel plugged in yet, and the DC to DC charger isn't plugged in yet. So it looks like everything on this board so far that we've tested is working as it should. Right, let's get on and check out this compressor uh, board and let's see how we go with that to make sure it's got power and that's working as it should. Because as you know from the previous video, We've linked the two compressors up to one tank to give us a lot more pressure output to blow up those big tyres on the truck. So here we go, we're about to turn on our twin, twin ARB compressors, which has the ARB pressure valve installed. What I'm hoping will happen when we turn the switch on, the tanks will build up to pressure. Once it gets to the 150 PSI that the pressure switches are set to in the compressors, it will stop. Then, from then on in, it'll be up to the app on our phone to control the ARB pressure valve. All right, let's give it a go. Here we go, let's turn the switch on. There you have it. The pressure must be reached. We've got 150 PSI sitting in this tank right now. So now it's up to the ARB link system then to tell the air what to do. Fantastic. We'll commission the ARB pressure valve at a later date, but today I'm happy that the compressors are working. Now we've powered up the board. We can see that the Simarine screen here has lit up its displays. So we can see that the battery is currently at 70%. If we scroll down, we haven't really done any programming of this yet, so it'll probably just be the factory settings. Um, we can see what's going on within there. We can see the current's 0.1 of an amp, etc., etc. 
So as we do our commissioning today and we get the inverter, that should, that should also tell us how much power the inverter is using um, and how much power is going to be going in from our uh, 240 charger as well as our DC to DC charger. So now we've done that, let's get on with commissioning the 240 volt board, which will ultimately then give power to our um, e-power charger, which will give us 60 amps of charge to this battery. So let's get on with commissioning the 240 volt board. So as demonstrated in the previous video, this is our 240 volt, volt board. Now make sure any work that's done on 240 volt needs to be carried out by a licensed electrician here in Australia. Any electrical work over 110 volts AC and 50 volts DC needs to be carried out by licensed personnel only and needs to have a compliance sticker put on it, okay, a safety sticker. All right, here we go. So what we've got today is we've got an RCD box with an earth leakage in it as well. What we're going to do is we're going to use that to plug in because it's going to be safety first. Once we've plugged the board in, we're then going to use a tester, this electrical tester. We'll plug that into the board to ensure our priorities are correct. It'll also check the resistance on our RCDs uh, and make sure that everything's wired up as it should be because one common thing people get wrong on these boards is the earthing configuration. All right, this inverter is a pretty, uh, well, it's, it's a bit unique to other inverters because it has a, a mains override. So as soon as we plug the mains into it, it goes off 12 volt and then it goes on to the 240 or as soon as we unplug it it goes from 240 back to the 12 volt power through the inverter it does that automatically an automatic switch over all right let's plug it in and see how we go got that there we'll switch it on or make sure this rcd is off on our board right we've turned that on let's hit this switch now there we go so with a bit of luck, within a second, yep, there we go. The e-power charger has started up and there she goes. As we expected, charging at 60 amps, 13.9 volts. Perfect, that means we're charging correctly. Right, from there, let's get on with some testing. So what we'll do is we'll simply plug in this test light into this side. Now, as seen by the previous video, this side here is purely 240 volt only. The inverter does not run this section, as this section will run the charger and it will run our fridge and freezer. Alternatively, when the fridge and freezer aren't running, that's the, uh, <laughs> the little multimeter beeping at me, when the fridge and freezer aren't running, they'll divert back to the 12 volt house battery, which is our 300 amp inner drive there. Righto, let's switch it on. Oh, perfect. We've got two lights there, which means 100% spot on. So we know our 240 is working fine. Righto, let's move over to this other, other output over here with the other put, with this output. This is purely, this comes through the inverter. So this power is mains power and inverter power. So let's plug our tester into there and see how we go. Again, perfect configuration. That works out exactly as we expected. All right, so what we're gonna do now is a bit of a test with the uh, workshop vacuum cleaner. We're gonna plug it in to our um, house power, which is gonna be fed from the inverter and the 240 volt mains. We're gonna plug the vacuum in while it's being fed on 240 volts. Then we're gonna unplug the mains and we're gonna see if the inverter can pick it up without any disruption to power. So let's give that a go now. Let's simply plug the workshop vacuum cleaner in. As we're done, it's switched on. It's now working to the 240 volts. If we now switch the 240 volts off at the socket, hopefully the inverter will pick the power up. There we go. Slight disruption there, but only minor. Right, now let's go take a look at the cell marine to see how much power this inverter is actually running using this vacuum cleaner. So here we are back at Sal Marine control panel here. So let's just go scroll down and have a look. At the moment, you can see our current draw at the moment is I don't know, between 1.6 and zero sort of amps there at 13.37 volts. What we'll do is we'll now switch on the vacuum cleaner and we'll see what effect a 2000 watt vacuum cleaner has when running through that inverter on our batteries and how much power we draw. Mm. 
there we go. You can see it's currently drawing about 105 amps. And our battery voltage has dropped down to 12.6. That's fairly impressive when you think about it, isn't it? So that's a fair bit of power being drawn out of that battery, 2000 watts. It's a 2600 watt inverter, so not quite at its capacity, but you can see it does a really good job for what we're intending. So there you have it. Today we've commissioned our boards, the three boards, ready to go into the MPS for its build. I'm very happy with the, um, with the results today. Everything's working as it should. Um, I can't wait to get it into the truck and get all the other componentry working along with all this board. But at least it's peace of mind for us now knowing that all this works as it should. So when we put it into the truck, we know it's all ready to go. Anyway, see you next time.